Mighty to heal, mighty to deliver. We praise you because there is none like you. You are our ever-present help in the time of trouble. You are the God near and the God afar. You are the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. You remain the conquering lion of the great tribe of Judah, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. We bless you this morning because you are faithful to heal. You are just in all that you do. We ask, oh God, that there will be a manifestation of your presence. We pray for this open heaven through your word. That you will speak life, you will speak hope, you will speak restoration to your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Uh, David, I think there's some coloring for kids there. The, uh, no, there's the three kids there, they can go with you. You can walk with them. I think you can manage the kids. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 60, actually, uh, from verse 1, the first scripture before we say anything. Isaiah chapter 60, from verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth. And thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your light. Lift up your eyes and look about you. You can't get on there. Eh? Are you online? All right, thank you. Verse 4, sorry. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble, I come to you. Your sons come from afar. Your daughters are carried on the heap. Then you will look and be radiant, and your heart will swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of nations will come. Heads of karma will cover your land. Young camels of media and all... The Sheba will come bearing gold and incense, proclaiming the praises of your God. Verse 1 again, Arise and shine, for your light is come. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness over the people, but upon you his glory appears. Arise and shine. For your light is come. Arise and shine. In the midst of darkness, arise and shine. The Bible says there is thick darkness, so it's not oblivious of the season that you and I find ourselves in right now. The Bible says we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. But I think that the church today seems to be ignorant of the doings of the enemy. And this is why we faint. The Bible says when we faint in the days of adversity, that means our strength is small. So it, 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 what the Lord of God is saying to you and me is that it, being a Christian, being a child of God, being spirit filled, being born again, being prayerful does not exempt you from adversity. Amen. Because if it exempts me from adversity, he wouldn't have said to me, if I faint in the days of adversity, that means my strength is small. Adversity comes to prove us. Arise and shine for your light is come from the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. But see, darkness covers the air. There's sickness, there's disease, there's pandemic, there is financial crisis, darkness of all sorts. There is trouble in the marriage. The children are going through all kinds of crisis. The Bible says this is the obvious. It says when wicked men begin to do wickedly in the land, those who know their God shall be strong and do exploit. There are a lot of people who can talk about God and still don't know him. There are a lot of us who can sing well about God. We can write, we can preach, we can articulate theologically who God is and who the Holy Spirit is but we have no relationship of, with the God that we so proclaim. He said those, not those who talk about him but those who know him in the hours of adversity that is the time they shine. 
He said, thick darkness is covering the people, but you that is of God, this is the hour for you to shine your light. Don't join the darkness. Romans chapter 13 verse 11 to 14 and knowing the time Romans 13 11 knowing this knowing the time the Bible says something about in, in, in the book of Chronicles it said the children of Issachar they were men who knew the time and the season so their ministry is knowing they are like uh, what we have in, uh, on TV these days, uh, weatherman. You know, the, the people that predict weathers, and they are, when it comes to grand cash, they are always wrong. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that is, and this is what it is sometimes too, that because we are not connected to the source, because we don't know the time and the season, we don't know what to tell people what to do at that time. When darkness is upon the surface of the earth, the people of God who are supposed to be aware of the time and the season are running for cover even with the people who seem not to know nothing. There's no difference between the church and sometimes and the world that they are supposed to rescue and supposed to represent the light of God in a time of thick darkness. The Bible says knowing the time that now it is high time to wake up out of your sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believe the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light verse 13 let us walk honestly as in the day not in riotous living and drunkenness not in chambering not in waterness not in strife not in envying we are living in a dangerous time and you cannot afford to be like the people of the world living in envy and strife and bitterness and anger and, and, and that a lot of people oh i don't commit adultery i don't get drunk i'm not on drugs so i'm doing well no you're not doing well if you full of envy, bitterness, and hate and strife in your heart. You go to the same church with people you're not talking to them. <laughs> I don't know how that is going to happen. I think some of us, when we get to heaven, the first thing we're going to do is say, Lord, I, I, I just want to make a request. I, I don't want to live next to this person, this person, this person, this person. <laughs> And that is if we make it there at all. Amen. All right? Verse 14. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Wake up. Last two Sundays or three Sundays ago, we talked about why men slept and uh, people go to sleep. And because we went to sleep, the enemy came and planted. And last Sunday, and we saw one, and b -b 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 the hour has come for us to wake up from that sleeping or slumber, whatever it is called. Because we are living in a dangerous time, but for the church, there, is, there can be no better season than now for us. Those who know. And I say this with all humility, with all joy and glory to God. I, will, I share with people, I said, listen, Cornerstone, I've been in Grand Cat for the last 14 years plus, going now. We have never had it better like we had in the last two and a half years. People can bear witness to that. We are not just saying it. The two and a half years of lockdown or lock in or lock out and all the thing that you want to call it of pandemic and pandemonium was one of our most prosperous thriving year spiritually physically financially and otherwise why because the lord god the word went before us and we stood upon the word of god when people were talking about isolation i said no it's not isolation it's incubation god has called us into a place of incubating and rebranding us we were the first i believe one of the first churches on earth today and i say it with all humility that the lord said it is a 
season in 2019 to 20, God began to say to us, shift is coming. And everybody is jumping on that and saying, shift, they didn't even understand. We didn't even know what it was. And I remember in January when we were rounding up that series and the Lord gave us a word that we stood on without knowing what it was from Job chapter 5. And it said, when, 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 when you take stock, I'm, I can't remember the whole verse now, verse 26, and it said, when you take stock of your tent, everything will be secured. That means there was a storm coming. We didn't know the nature of the storm we didn't know what it was going to look like we never knew that it was going to be called COVID or whatever but we knew the Holy One that knew us and loved us told us Amen. and I keep telling people I say go back when your heart is failing you go back to December January 2, 2029 we have everything there online you go through it and hear what God was saying and so when the storm came we became like the eagles we mount up wings as eagles and we rode the storm when wicked men begin to do wickedly in the land those who know their God I used to tell people in the last two and a half years I don't want to die if there's anybody that doesn't want to die it's me but I'm not afraid of death. Because it's one thing I have no control over. <laughs> it will come when it will come. No matter how fearful, no matter how I protect myself, you can go to bed with all the security and don't wake up. You can be driving all your life with an armored car so that nothing happens to you without a bulletproof. If the bullet did not take you out, Something will take your breath one day. Nobody's living here alive. Listen to me. As true followers of Christ, we are not just called to make a difference in the world. We are called to be the difference. It's not about Let's make a difference. You can talk about making a difference without being the difference. The true mark of a child of God is when he or her become a living epistle read of man. It's not making a let's make no no you don't just let's make a difference. You become the difference that people can see. You become the Bible that the world can read and interpret. You become John three sixteen. You become Ephesians and Corinthians to the people around you, to your family, to your friends. Jesus then said, be, he said, you are the light of the world. Be the difference. You are the salt of the world. Be the difference. Don't preach about being relevant. I was thinking about it when I dressed like this, which is not my very comfort zone, you know. <laughs> you know, the church is trying to be relevant to the world, you know. And we pastors, the new thing now is to get rid of all the formalities and so, that, so that we can appeal to the world and be like them. You're not appealing to nobody by changing the way you dress. You appeal to people by the level of power and light that comes out of you. We can change our clothes, dress code for all we can, we can appeal to their sensuality, but we will not get to their soul. The politicians that are leading us astray have never changed their dress code. They still wear that dark suit and tie, and we are eating from their hands everything they say. We have changed our dress code and to wear jeans and rip jeans to church and stand at the altar with all casuality. We are casual physically and spiritually. That's why the church has no more voice in their community. Let's get back. Let's wake up. Don't be just an agent of change. Be the change. 
wake up. To wake up simply means to stare into action. It is to become actively involved in what you preach, what you sing, what you say. You can't sing holy is the Lord. And the next minute, we can't tell the difference between you <laughs> and the one that doesn't know what holy is. To wake up is to become conscious or aware of who you are and whose you are and who you have been called to serve. You remember when last Sunday and, I, and, and, and blind Bartimaeus and they say, be of good cheer. The master called it thee. What was the first thing that blind Bartimaeus did? The Bible says he took off the garment that identified him as a beggar, that identified him as a low life, that identified him as a nobody, that had the, the one that ostracized him from the common wealth of Israel. He had to take that garment off because there was a new call that has come unto him and is entering into a new season the old has to go away in Genesis you see this is why we say and I used to do that for years and, and let us invite the presence of the Holy Spirit let us invite God into this meeting you know we 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 em some, your, some religious language without even walking through. That is how we just follow things. Well, let's invite the presence of God here. God is everywhere. He's always there. Job says, where can I go from thy presence? If I make my bed in hell, even you are there. We don't pray for his presence. We become aware. That awareness come when I change. <laughs> Amen. You see how it is? You know, and so we can get religious, let's pray, and we can speak in tongues and put on all the, the spiritual acrobatism that we do in church and shake and jack for all we can. We can do all that and still not experience the manifest presence of God because our heart has not changed and our heart has not become aware of the one we've come to worship. In Genesis 28, Verse 16, and, uh, and Jacob said, and God was here. He didn't say God just came. He said, and God is here, and I know it not. Surely, God, even here was a man who had a stone for a pillow in an open wilderness, not in a five-star hotel, not in a church with the stained glasses and all the right music and all the ushers and the choirs and, and the symphony is going in key and everybody is singing. You know what I mean? Singing, you know, some of us and we get walked up and the speaker is too loud, the song is not, they can't sing well enough. We're not coming to sing for you. We are not here to entertain you. The one who we are worshiping has not complained yet. I'm not saying we should do, I'm not saying if, uh, churches should be a room for mediocrity. No, 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 that's not a point I'm making. But when we get so hung up in our flesh, because we have made the church about us, we've come to worship him, not Pastor John. So if Pastor John doesn't like the music, too bad. I'm not singing for him. I'm not lifting up a holy hand to impress nobody. I'm lifting up holy hands because I'm not aware of the holy presence of the one who has redeemed me with his blood. 
but become aware of his presence. To wake up is to, to recall you and me from our place of deadness and dead works. You know, we have a second Timothy in chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Well, is that interesting in scripture? The Bible says, In the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall become lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasures. And he'll go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And I think in verse 5 to 6, and he said, They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The power there is not just speaking in tongues or, or raising the dead or from that. Or from, that would be wonderful too. Physically and going to the hospital and waking them up and, and just lay hand upon a cancer patient and getting cured. No, no, no. The, the, the denying the power, it is denying the power of transformation. The power that changes my character to make me like Christ. Deny the power that rescued me from dead works, like the scripture says. And we're wondering why, with all our screaming and all our money, all our technology, all our modernity at the church, you know, we have all the ten pointers, yet we are not pointing men to the, to, 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 to the cross of Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 says that you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh or your flesh God has made alive together with him having forgiven you all your trespasses and so to wake up is to come back from that dead words and to wake up means to illuminate my mind spiritually Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 said they were darkened. They are, they, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the God of God, you know, alienated from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their heart. And so when people have been alienated or separated from God through ignorance and the darkness of their heart, because ignorance is one of the greatest weapons. We've talked about that in our Bible studies. We have overemphasized it over and over and over again because ignorance is the greatest weapon and tool in the hand of the enemy and so because of ignorance people become dead in their heart and their heart their foolish hearts become darkened and so the light of God comes to shine light into that darkness and suddenly our heart is illuminated you stand up we wake up and you say whoa now I see you know, some will say that aha moment. Suddenly, it makes sense. Suddenly, living for myself does not make sense anymore. Suddenly, fulfilling the lust of the flesh has no desire for me anymore. I'm not trying to be a good Christian. I'm just trying to be a child of the Father that is loved by God. Suddenly, I understand what a great love that Jesus has for me. Are you spiritually alert? To wake up is to become spiritually alert. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest. Arise from the dead. And Christ will give you light. Are we awake? Are we answering the call that is upon us? Are we being a light in the place of our assignment on our mission field when you step out to the grocery store for that second that is your mission field is your light shining when you go out your profession your, your, your job that is your mission field can people really tell whether you are a child of God Without seeing a big Bible in your hand. <laughs> you 
even with the Bible, they will still be wondering. They say, well, I, I don't know whether it's another big uh, textbook that you carry. Because what you are carrying in your hand does not correspond with what is coming out of your mouth. So people are confused. When you wake up, the Bible says you become what? Actively involved in the things of God. In the things of the kingdom with passion. Revelation chapter 3 verse 2 says, Wake up and strengthen what is remain that is about to die. To wake up is to come to your senses so that you don't miss out on the new wine of the Holy Spirit that is being poured out. There's a new wine. There's a new wine. Behold, I do a new thing. Can't you see it? The new wine is not in our dress code. The new wine is the outpouring of the power and the presence and the glory of God in an unimaginable way. The new wine is that which oozes out of our heart into our mouth to the world around us. The new wine is that which we have taken and now we are drunk with the spirit. <sighs> A drunken person will not tell you that he is drunk. Amen. You know. He doesn't have to tell you that he's taking, you know what I mean. If he's gone to the bar, they use the word, get wasted. And it, you see, our words, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You hear teenagers, young people, let's go and get wasted. Of course, that's what they're doing. They're getting wasted. Wasting their destiny, wasting their tomorrow, wasting their finances, wasting their life. And so when a man or woman really get wasted, they don't need to tell you they've just been wasted. Their actions will speak louder. Even than the smell of the booze. You can see them one mile away. This guy is really wasted. Can they smell you? Have you had time have you been filled with the Holy Spirit to the overflow that people can see you and say, man, this woman, this man is wasted. <laughs> man, they are drunk. They are drunk. There's something wrong with this man. It's a, and they're acting abnormally. That is Christianity 101. There is something about them. You know, when... when, when, when if you don't drink alcohol, you know, even if you want to help the drunken person, you, you know, the stench push you away. You know, there is something about the, the odor that comes out. But the opposite is of the Holy Spirit. The aroma, the sweet smelling savour of the glory of God should make you attractive. Should pull people. Joel chapter 1 verse 5 is the reference they say, Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl for ye drinkers of wine because the new wine because of the new wine for it has been cut off from your mouth the new wine has been cut off because you have chosen the old wine to wake up is to become aware of the sustaining power and the presence of the Holy Spirit and of God in your life. Psalm 3 verse 5 and verse 6 says, I, He laid me down and I slept and I wake up and the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people that have set themselves against me. You see, a man who is awake in the power of the Holy Spirit does not know fear. The Bible says do not fear what they fear. It doesn't mean you should be careless or act stupidly. But you cannot be so afraid that even the world will begin to wonder what is wrong with you. Amen. I've seen people who don't go to church more courageous in difficult times than those of us who can quote Genesis and Revelation with one leg up and one feet standing. To wake up is to break out of songs and to become aware of the victory that you have in Christ Jesus. It's to break out in songs of victory and celebration even when things are not going your way. 
Judges chapter 5 verse 12 says, Awake, Deborah, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Benoah. Awake is to rise and shine the light of God's goodness to the dying world. That's why we read Isaiah 60. Arise and shine. Is to rise and shine. Is to make a dif it's not just to make a difference in the world, it's to become the difference. To wake up is to refuse to surrender the destiny of the ones that have been committed into your hand and in my hand to the hands of the enemy. We contend for that which God has entrusted to us. To wake up, like I said, is to let your light shine for the world to see. I had, we had such a life transforming experience yesterday. And so just round up with this story at, in, in Grand Prairie, in Walmart yesterday, I, I broke down my heart. It, it was a tears of joy. I just couldn't explain it. I was filled with so much emotion because I had to hold myself. We were in Walmart walking out and then there was this man he was on a, a wheelchair but he, you know this uh, this uh, he had this uh, 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 some uh, cerebral something so he cannot talk he, he doesn't he can't talk you know and he has his hand bent like this so he's everything he's uh, motorized even his wheelchair and we were coming towards him and as soon as we got to him he stopped. He stopped us. You know, but he could not talk. And he was pointing at me. And I stopped and I was looking at him. And I was, he, he, he was just pointing for a few seconds. He was just pointing at me. And I was pointing. And so I went close to him. And he was trying to smile. And I started smiling. And he pointed at his chest. And so I had my cross on. It's not a fashion statement. If I wanted to make a fashion statement of wearing a gold or diamond, which I can't afford, maybe when Brian was working at the diamond mine, I would have bribed him to get me some. <laughs> but, you know, I had this, I, I said I using this, um, this uh, wooden pendle about, I think about the same time we came to Grand Cash, right? Because courage, when the first time, courage, they gave it to courage then, in Kiss Church, and that was the first thing he presented to me, and I didn't want to wear it. Then I'm like, okay, me, wood and all that on my neck with that dark tread. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. But, and I turned the Holy Spirit just told me, said, this is just more than a gift, right? And I started wearing it, and I've been wearing it. I have, the original one has, I've given it out like how many times, but I always have extra, right? So I had this one on yesterday, another one, so this guy pointed at it, and I do you see, yeah, then instead of smiling, and he did like this. My heart just melted. Here was a man in the agony of life. Here was a man who should be pointing his finger at God. If God is God, why am I in this state? Huh? A lot of people who well, are angry with God because I prayed they didn't give me my new job. I don't go to church anymore. Here was this broken man looking at the symbol of the glory of the one who saved his soul. Jesus said, do not be afraid of those who can just harm the body. Be afraid of the one that can harm both the body and the soul. Here was a man broken and battered on a wheelchair. Here was me standing here who had more connection with what I was wearing than myself. And we stood there and I just said, do you want it? And he said, yeah. So he took off his hat and held it like this. And I took my cross off. Uh, yeah, in the presence of everybody. And when I put a cross across to him, his countenance just changed. You know, he was like he wanted to leap out of that chair. I put, and he would just, he held my hand, he wouldn't just let me go. And I was just blessing him. And I was just blessing him. I was just blessing him. Now, it is not just this. 
that he saw. This was just a point of contact. This was just an article of faith. His faith is not on this. This was a word that he could connect that which his mouth could not express what his heart knew. Some of the things we do is not because our faith is on that, because we are visual people. He doesn't know. He can't say John 3, 16. He doesn't know how to quote anything. He doesn't have fine sounding word, but his heart was full with the glory of God. Those few minutes was one of the best moments of my life. I can always tell you that. And I saw that. I was blessed. And I said, if a man who is in this state publicly is still not ashamed to identify with this old rugged cross, that's the man who is awake and alive that most bishop, most pastors, most deacon, most elders in the church today. They may never have the opportunity to stand like this and be eloquent and dress nice, but his heart is dressed powerfully already for the glory of God. What a witness that is. In your brokenness, when you are awake in the realm of the spirit by the glory of God, broken, you are still attractive. You don't need to, to, to look nice physically to be attractive. When you carry the aroma of heaven, it doesn't matter how you're dressed. You can be dressed in a three-piece suit. You can be dressed in a Bahama shirt and t-shirt. That is not what people come to look. What they are looking for, what revitalize and what revive or make a church relevant is the light of the glory of the soon coming king. We can have all the right instrument, right word, without the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Forget about it. In all our getting, let's get our heart awakened again. I lied on yesterday night and, and I was thinking about him and I said, God, as we pray, I said, Lord, what was that all about? What was that all about? Why did you let me see that? Why did you allow this to be part of my journey in life? What are you trying to teach me by this encounter? Stop complaining. <laughs> Stop thinking that you don't have a fair deal in life. Stop thinking that God has not been good to you. Shall we stand up? Broken, yet still shining. In a wheelchair with cerebral palsy or whatever you want to call it, yet you're still praising God. I don't know how long he's been in that state. What is your excuse? Why are we allowing the things of this world? To keep us in a slumber spiritually. When are we going to wake up? Barry, can you guys, can we just, I want us to just sing the old rugged cross. That's our prayer this afternoon. I don't know the song. I don't know how to take it. When I think about the old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And that will be our, if this is not just to get a service going, this will be our prayer. 
we can find a song when I think of the old rugged cross uh, courage can you help you to find our words the old rugged cross as we sing that if you are home we are just we're not just trying to get something going we just listen to the words and let it become our prayer that is a wake-up call a wake-up call to a place of spiritual awareness wake up for the night is almost over wake up rise and shine God is not a motivational speaker God is aware of the darkness is aware of the pain is aware of your shortcoming is aware of the crisis in the world is aware of the food shortage is aware of the price of gas it's gone through the roof and some of us don't even know if we can afford to pull our trailer into camping we are worried about trailer going to camping as a man who is sitting on a wheelchair who doesn't know what that looks like right and he's still praising God so instead of complaining about the price of gas let's just sing about the old rugged cross instead of complaining about the, the, the price of food at least we can still afford bread and peanut butter amen and somebody walked into this place this morning you can ask Cheryl and she says she is not eating for two days whether it's by choice or by accident I do not know but that is not your story that's not my story Our story today is not that we don't have what to eat. We don't know what to eat. <laughs> Amen. Okay. On a hill far away. Shall we all just want to go? On a, a hill, hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for our work of lost sinners was slain so I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday Despised by the world as a wonderful attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. Cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange here if you are still asleep in religious compromising lifestyle I believe that the hour has come for you to wake up if you're still sleeping on the fence whether to go all in for Jesus or not I believe this is a call to you that you have no excuse I don't make emotional calls 
But I want you to think about your life. Are you living as a light? Are you change person? Are you change? Your heart will know. You will know. I may not know. But heaven knows and you know. Are you really living the life that represent heaven? Is your heart right with God? If your heart is right with God, it will be right with man, with time. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will quicken you into a true change this season so that you can be the light that will shine in the dark places of your family and your community. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Go with God. Have a wonderful afternoon. Amen.